HealthWish is a series of conversations about the state of healthcare in New York City's fabulous fifth borough, Staten Island. Our goal is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health. Because when we raise health, we raise everyone. The Florina Cancer Center in Staten Island, New York offers access to the best cancer providers and staff. We can now deliver all the care you need conveniently under one roof. Give it a listen. Hey, Staten Island, welcome to Health Wish, and I'm coming to you from the very first time from the Florina Cancer Center. We're all super excited about this, and we're here with Dr. Chika Madhu, who's our Chair of Radiation Oncology, and welcome to Florina. Thank you for having me. You've been working on Staten Island now for how long? Ooh, eight years, I think, this summer. It goes yeah. by quickly, doesn't it? It does go by. I remember my first day. So Dr. Madhu, uh, you were a working radiation oncologist in our department for several years, and then you became chair here a little while ago. Correct. Almost two years ago, I think. Can you give me a sense of what is radiation oncology compared to what people think of in terms of cancer treatment? Excellent question. So a lot of times when patients come to us, they have a few questions that I hear a lot. Am I going to set off the detector, the metal detector at the airport? Am I going to be dangerous to my, my family? So, you know, pregnant women, little kids around them. You know, but re radiation really in the treatment of cancer center is just the use of high energy x-rays in order to kill cancer cells. Most people who undergo radiation are not radioactive. So kind of like how you go get a chest x-ray, you come and get your treatment and you go home and you're not dangerous to anybody around you. Some patients may get radiation implants. Now for those patients, we'll have some precautions to keep everybody safe, but most patients are fine. So it's not like you hear that you know, you're exposed to all this radiation. I think people hear radiation mm -hmm. and they think of all these terrible things where this is really kind of delivering as much radiation as is safe into a very small area, which is why it's really not a big deal afterwards. Exactly, very targeted. And we're nice people too. And, you know, while you've been delivering care in this first floor of this building now for some time, what does having this new cancer center mean to what you do every day? It is incredibly exciting. Um, so for some of our patients who undergo chemo and radiation, some days they have to get chemo and radiation on the same day. So guess what happens? They get radiation here, now they have to go over to the medical oncology building, which is two buildings away. It's raining, it's snowing, how are we gonna get there? So sometimes the patients have to get in their car, drive over there, pay for parking again, and then get in to see their medical oncologist. With everyone in the same building, all we have to do is get on the elevator and we can go up to the second floor and see the medical oncologist or go up to the third floor and get their infusion. It's really a quality of life, a patient experience issue for the patients and it was really well overdue and we're so excited about it. So staying with that point, that means if you were getting treated in a center that was not hospital based and didn't have radiation oncology, that means you'd actually have to leave the site and go somewhere else to get treated in the same day. Absolutely. There are some centers that don't have radiation on site, and that means you have to travel. Transportation is a big issue for a lot of our patients. Not everyone has a car. Not everyone is able to take public transportation depending on what their disabilities are. So it's really important to be able to bring everything together. That way the patient gets all their treatment in one building. And speaking in terms of convenience, right, so even for people that have a car, right, so physically getting to other places and transport time and I remember I've been told by cancer patients one of the hardest parts is everything in their life becomes about cancer and it kind of takes over everything. I want to talk to you about being taken care of in your own community, right? You try to get people to spend as much of their time as you can in their regular home and their, with their regular friends and less time being spent traveling and less time being spent worrying about where they are. And to put everything together, it's kind of like the summation of that. I, I, thoughts on that? Absolutely. So, you know, cancer is hard. It is hard. No one ever wakes up and says, oh, I'm going to get cancer today, <laughs> right? You get no. hit with that news. And then now what are we going to do about it? Cancer affects the patient, but not only the patient, the caregivers around them, the family members. So if someone has to truck into the city every time they have to get chemo or every time they have to get radiation, someone has to take them. So now it's not only affecting that patient, it's also affecting a family member, their job. So our goal with this cancer center is to make sure that you can get all the care that you need right here on Staten Island. You don't need to spend two hours going into the city to go get the same treatment that you would have gotten here. And you get more love too here. Just honing in on that point, 
that if you went to 10 different doctors, either oncologists or radiation oncologists, that you would actually get like 10 different treatments where that's not really how cancer care works anymore, right? It's really kind of, it's amazing how much it's become standardized based, based upon the best available literature. Any thoughts on how that's actually developed over the last decade? You know, what I have to say is standard of care is standard of care, right? So if you have a well put together center and you're delivering standard of care, you can do it from anywhere, okay? So for our cancer institute, let's say radiation oncology, we're completely integrated, right? So the care that a patient gets here is the same care that they're going to get at Zuckerberg, is the same care that they're going to get at Ember, is the same care that they're going to get at Lenox Hill. What we do is we look at evidence-based medicine and we take all of that data and put it into what we call radiation treatment directives. So for each organ site, we have evidence-based data that this is the best way to treat this patient. If the patient can't undergo treatment based on this, here are alternatives number one, number two, number three. And I will work on that for, let's say, GYN. And one of my colleagues at Huntington will work on that for breast. And we all put it together and we all share it, okay? So when you have the same quality of care completely integrated throughout the entire system, there's no need to travel anywhere. The standard of care is there. And what we're doing with this building is trying to bring in some of the things that may have been missing. So clinical trials. Over the years that we've been doing clinical trials, there have been certain issues with them. Could you, would you care to go into that a little bit? Absolutely. So, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Sometimes, you know, patients may be a little bit wary about getting enrolled in clinical trials, you know, but what we try to do as an institution is to make sure that we give everyone the chance and the access to clinical trials. When you look at the U.S. population and the U.S. population that gets cancer, and then you look at the population that's enrolled in clinical trials, there's a disparity there. So you have an underrepresentation of Hispanics, uh, African Americans in clinical trials. And why is that? So a lot of institutions, a lot of communities have looked at this and what I've been working on on a national level with our Astro community, uh, Astro is a big radiation oncology national community, is to work with a lot of the research institutions, the research bodies to kind of look at how are we designing clinical trials and do we think there are things in there that could potentially exclude certain populations. And then on a global scale, looking at social determinants of health, are we given making sure that everybody has access first to get into the hospital that has the clinical trials? And then when they get to the hospital that has the clinical trials, are we having those conversations with everyone? And then when patients get here, we have to let them know without any bias and make sure that we get those patients on clinical trials. It's an extension of how we envision this institution on this island. And I know that for a lot of people, when you hear the term research, it somehow means an experiment or something's being tried on. And in cancer, that's, it means something a little bit different than that. Can, can you just give us an understanding of why that is so important and what it means specifically in cancer? So clinical trials, um, a lot of times, will not answer a question for the patient who's undergoing the trial at the time. But it helps us shape the future of treatment down the road. It helps us answer questions for the future generation. And thank you to all of the patients who actually do entertain the thought of getting enrolled in a clinical trial and actually get enrolled because we would never be able to answer those questions. I did want to ask you specifically about this building and how it changes the game for cancer patients. So if I do like the 10 second overview of what was going on in this building, this floor remains a busy, vibrant radi uh, radiation oncology practice where we can do uh, all the radiation treatments that we need to do. The second floor becomes a fully functioning, essentially, oncologist's office where we can do multidisciplinary care. We can actually see a couple of different kinds of doctors at the same time and do all of that kind of higher level stuff. And then the third floor is an infusion center for both adults and peds. Having that all be together in this brand new building, it changes the game how for you? You know, what it gives us the opportunity to do is bring everything together for the patient. 
and raise the quality of care that we deliver for the patient. So I'll start with patient navigation. So that patient who get that cancer screening, get that diagnosis, what happens next? They're overwhelmed, right? It's about to be the holidays and they now have a new diagnosis. If I have a patient navigator, call that patient and say, I'm gonna walk you through every single process. That's what we're working on to make sure that that patient is walked through every single process from getting to see the surgeon, the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, and then on to survivorship. You need to make this appointment, the MRI, the PET scan, they have someone who's holding their hand every single step of the way. Multidisciplinary clinics, you mentioned that. And you know, sometimes the patient has to come in and see the surgeon on Monday, and then Wednesday they have to see the medical oncologist, and then on Friday they have to see the radiation oncologist. That's a lot on a patient who just got diagnosed with cancer. So what we're trying to do is to try to streamline the process so we can have a patient come in on one day and see all three of us at the same time. We can have a collective consensus on how to approach the treatment for that patient and the patient navigator takes over from there. We have social services in here. So we've got our social workers, we have our supportive services like nutrition that'll help us with patients who have head and neck cancers who have difficulty maintaining a good diet during the course of treatment. Our social workers help with transportation, issues that people have at home. Like I said, cancer is hard and helping kind of set things up at home for patients. And then we have pharmacy, we have lab, we have all of those things put together. That way when a patient comes in here, what we promise you is that you will be taken care of. But I just wanted to kind of highlight something that you just said. I think this is incredibly important. So Northwell Health is, you know, multiple sites. If you're getting a diagnosis, from Montauk to Manhattan, Staten Island to Westchester, based upon the best available data that is actually developed together. Am absolutely. I, under, am I cr understanding that correctly? You're absolutely correct. So what we've developed at the Northwell Health Cancer Institute is to create what we call disease management teams, right? So for breast cancer, there are certain leads within that disease site. And then you invite several physicians from all of the sites. And at those meetings, we talk about the current standard of care new technologies, new research that's coming up, and how we're going to shape the care we give our patients at Northwell, not just one site or another site, at Northwell in total. Join us next time as we continue the conversation with Dr. Chika Madhu, celebrating the staff and our amazing donors. For more information on the Florina Cancer Center and ways to give back, please click the link in the video description. We're very interested in your health wish. Contact us at healthwish at northwell.edu. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.